Hey there, welcome back to That's Not Proper, and I'm your host, Corey Asuncion. Thank you for listening in today. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. On today's podcast, we're going to be talking about a lot of topics. They all pretty much center around gender inequality. We're going to be talking about the dehumanization and deletion of women and young girls. We're going to be talking about feminism. And we're going to be talking about how important it is to call on men, to enlist men as agents and champions of change alongside women. Today I have with me Stu. I've known Stu for uh, almost 26 years. Known him so well that I had seven kids with him. He is a self-proclaimed feminist, father of three daughters and four sons, and four grandsons. He's joining me today because I thought it would be excellent to bring him in to get a male voice so we can discuss and break down and communicate the great importance on getting on the side of equality because inequality is like a sickness and who wants to be sick? Before we get started, though, I just wanted to remind everybody that this month is Women in History Month. And at the beginning of the month and on Facebook and Instagram, I had said that I put a call out to women and non-binary people asking them if they have started a business. And if so, that I wanted to know what that business was so that I could promote them a little bit on the podcast. And so today I am promoting Rochelle Ball of BallTrainingSolutions.com. She is committed to using science-based humane training methods that emphasize cooperation and choice for both you and your dog. What she provides is dog training services that come to your home, including leash reactivity, dog cat introductions, new puppy, rowdy high energy adolescent, and cooperative medical care. She is primarily located in San Leandro, San Lorenzo, Hayward, and Castro Valley, which is in Northern California area. Her phone number is 925 480 Seven six six two, and once again, that's Rochelle Ball of BallTrainingSolutions.com. At the end of the podcast, I'm going to repeat this information. In addition to that, I'm going to put it in the show notes for you. So that if you want to contact Rochelle because maybe you need a little help with your dog or puppy at home, she is the one to call. Thank you so much. I'm trying to figure out where this story is. I mean, this originating from right now. Go ahead. <laughs> So I get into the room. It's like a prep room. I go to a nurse is showing me where to go. So she takes me to a partition. And I go inside and she says, you know, they usually say something like get undressed and then I'll come back and check on you or, you know, something like that. So I think once or twice I had asked because I don't wear bibs. I don't wear underwear. Panties? No, not panties. Panties? No. <laughs> No, I mean, I don't wear briefs. Okay. Okay. I wear <laughs> swim shorts. Okay. Because I'm not trying to put underwear. I mean, for many reasons. But one is I'm not trying to put underwear on, on any swim shorts. But I guess I would have to do that if I get in there and they want me to have, and the swim shorts are not okay. So for the, like the first couple surgeries, I checked, hey, you know, do you want me to take the swim shorts off or are they okay? No, they're okay. All right, so then the next surgery, I go in and ask them again, I think. They tell me that's yeah, okay. So anyway, this is the third or fourth surgery. Mm -hmm. I go in, and the lady says, this time the nurse, new nurse. A lot of personnel changes over there, or it could be just different shifts or whatever I'm seeing, but different faces every time. So she says, oh, you're going to have to take those those shorts off. I guess she starts to, she sees, because I got jeans, then I got shorts, and it was must have been summertime because I didn't have, long johns underneath i just had shorts swim shorts and jeans so and i usually come like that so she tells so I, she i get my pants down and she looks over because it's just me going to my shorts and she sees the shorts she's like oh those are gonna have to come off and so i told her i go oh they usually let me leave them on you know she said no those are gonna have to come off okay that's cool i ain't got nothing underneath it <laughs> and she says oh i can give you a pair of like Paper? Or, I don't know. Like yeah, she might have offered panties? some paper panties or something like that. But I was like, I ain't got nothing under here. She might have said something like, just leave your underwear on. You know, I said, oh, I ain't got nothing on. I need my swim shorts, you know, your swim shorts. I said, that's why I usually leave them on, you know. She said, oh, those have to come off. I said, okay. So I get down to my nothings all together. And I got a, <laughs> but I got a gown on. You know, they give mm -hmm. you a paper gown. Or I think it's a paper it's gown. your booty is hanging out the back. Well, whatever. Not if you tie it right. It's all closed up, you know. 
But but yeah, I got I'm naked. Mm-hmm. As the day I was born, I even got my earrings in. All right, <laughs> no hat, no glasses. So then they wheeled me over. Well, like I said, a lot of different faces every time I come. I get into the the operating room where they prep you. To, you know, they gotta like it's my arm, so they gotta tape one arm to the to a table. I gotta have one arm out. So there's nurses coming in and doing all this for you. So I remember this time was this lady pushed me in there, you know, and she's, how you doing today or whatever, you know, making small talk with me. So then I get in there and these two nurses come over and, and then they, they got to scoot me over onto this bed. A couple more nurses come over and, and I, I forget what they're doing, but they're all working on me. Mm-hmm. Then I look over and then there's the, another nurse. And then I think, and then you finally look up wait, and there's Wait, a, hold on a second. Were yeah. you at any point here doped up yet? Not yet. They didn't put it oh, in yet. because there's an but awful lot I of nurses over, in that I room. Think, <laughs> no, there was definitely three nurses, okay. plus the one that came in with me, I think. Whether okay. she stayed or not, I'm not sure. All right, but so on. anyway, so there's about five women in there. And now I'm trying to remember if I looked up and seen the, the last person that talks to you is the anesthesiologist that tells you, okay, now just count down from 10. Mm-hmm. And I can't remember if I looked over. I think I did. I looked over and it was a, a woman doing it. Mm-hmm. You know, she says to me, you're just going to need to count down from 10. And so I remember counting down from 10 going, man, I got nothing on. And I and I'm in a room uh, full of women and I'm falling asleep. So, yeah. So that was about how I feel now oh. coming into the <laughs> that's where we're to going the with podcast. This. I, didn't yeah. know, I didn't know where we were going with this. My gosh. Yeah. Took you six because I, to I don't remember ever doing that before in my life, you know. Having so you feel like five you're, women. <clears throat> there's a bunch of women in the room, and you're naked. And I'm feet. naked, and they're putting me to sleep. <laughs> so, you know, well, so was I know. was I comfortable? I was so comfortable, man. I was so good. Oh, you're you know? saying this because I asked you earlier if you what, whether or not I was nervous, and I right. said no. I feel about like well, you how I did when to I. To be fair, you don't really get nervous, really. Well, I don't know if that I I get it's meant much it's heightened energy. You know, so anxious, it may, you mean? yeah, it's definitely anxious is what yeah. it is, but it, is that you feel right it now? turns into, no, but you smoked. No. Do I feel like that now? Yeah. No, I don't feel like that now. What I'm telling you is you asked me if I get nervous oh, Okay. and I said, I definitely feel, but it may not look like nerves. It may look like hyper. I don't know. Oh, okay. Or yeah, just extra or. Oh, extra. That's a Whatever. word I use for you. Or, periodically. or angry. Oh, yeah, I've seen you that. Know, not, yeah. not so much now. It's like because tension. That one is, yeah, because that one's the easy one to pick out. But whatever it is, it's energy. So, you know, you're not you're not calm. No, but I feel calm okay. right now. And I felt calm falling asleep with them five women working on me. Well, good. Okay, so you're ready to get started? I have something I'm going to... Are you asking me that, like, yeah. in the middle of us talking? Well, this was chit-chat. You're not recording this. I'm recording this. Well, I don't know what you're saying then. Am I ready? All right, Sassy ready. McPherson, I'm just listen. I'm as ready as I, okay, so I was when we Are you started. ready? Because I'm going to do something <laughs> that I didn't tell you I was going to do. Yeah, I knew I was coming. I, like I said, <laughs> what happened to me after the, I fell asleep? I don't know what the five women did. I have no idea. Okay, so here it is. Here it is. I'm going to do some, like, icebreaker questions. Okay? Nothing crazy... Okay. I'm not scared of you. <laughs> no. You don't know that? Yes. Yeah, no, I know that. I think we both know that about one another. But so now listen. They're just some icebreaker questions. I don't think you know that. What? <laughs> <laughs> now what? What do you want? Okay. Wow. <laughs> so sassy. Uh, icebreaker icebreaker questions because the listeners don't know who you are really. I mean, like, I'm, oh, you ready? Uh, yes. Icebreaker, icebreaker questions. Ready? Okay, so you have to sing karaoke. What song do you pick? What song do I pick? Yeah. If I have to sing yeah. karaoke? I want to see if I'm right on this one. Oh, that's uh, Garth Brooks. Wait, what? Okay. Garth Brooks. What, what song is that? Oh, Low Places, right? I don't know. Oh, I okay, yeah. What's the first? How oh, no. I, I mean, it could be John Denver. It depends on my mood, really. Uh, I wasn't sure if you'd do that or if you would do It's Not On You. That one. Who is that? Uh, yeah, that's Tom Jones. Tom Jones. And yeah. I don't know. I th- hear you that sing that one 
pretty comparable to that Garth Brooks. Tom one. Jones. No, I would probably sing a Tom Jones song, but I need to go grab my phone because I can't remember which the one I'd sing. Okay. All right, so most not, likely yeah, the first that one, choice would be the Garth Brooks Low no, Places. No, not necessarily. Like I said, okay, it depends one. on my mood. No, 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 you can't. Oh, but okay. But for the mood, I guess I'm in Top now. three. It said, well, I mean, if it's not... This is you being extra, by the way. Okay, go ahead. The top three. <laughs> top three, go. This is me being extra? Yeah, top three, go. Well, no, I, I think I'm going to... Instead, I'll just take offense. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what, is it, what do you want, a third one now? Well, you said Garth Brooks, yeah. and then uh, Low Places, and then you said I didn't. I don't even remember what you said. No, I didn't give you another one. Okay. Uh, I, how's about uh, man? I had it too, but then you wanted to push me around. Okay, fine. Garth Brooks. Okay, so here's the next one. You How ready? about the lion sleeps tonight? We that one. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. All right, favorite album. I know it's a good one. Favorite album or song. Or both. My favorite album or song? Mm -hmm. Oh, man. You, got, you, you can pick me. both. Can you can you... pick an album and you can pick a song. All right. Well, I just told somebody that, well, it was my favorite UB40 song. Yeah, I guess you got to, it's got to be Uncle Bob. It has to be Survival. Survival is and your then, favorite. But for song. Yeah. Survival you, is your favorite album. Yeah. Okay. But for song, you have to do Jaw Live. Jaw Live. Yeah, that has to be. Here, next question. You ready? Yeah. Who have you been told you look like? Oh, man. Come on. Okay, we I'll should. I'll be sure. I'll be sure. I get... yeah. Oh, I forgot about him. That was pre uh, beard yeah. facial and hair. Yeah, and then I don't really want to mention any other names. I, I think I was <laughs> cool with I'll be sure, but after that, it stopped being funny. <laughs> so. I'm Wait, you. Well, now, that. what about when you were like in high school or like, I don't Whatever know. Whatever y'all remember, because I don't remember. So I'll be sure. We're just going to stick with I'll be sure right now. Because yeah. I know of some I, other ones. If, whatever you remember, I don't remember. Well, you remember I'll be sure. We'll just leave it at that then yeah. because you don't want to remember the other ones then. Okay, next question. I think I might remember one, but I sure ain't saying his name. So. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> sure, I'm not. What's, if you could have one superpower. We do this with the kids a lot. One superpower. I'm usually Hulk. But it's I'm not, that's a Hulk that's when, a um, character. What's yeah, that's my word? superpower. It's, it's just is I get brute really strength mad. Uh huh. That's my superpower. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. No, Here. I don't know. That sounds good to me. Get uh, get uh, Hulk superpowers. All yeah, I get all yoked up and walk around town in. Uh, Cut off Denim cutoffs. Nice. Yeah, baby, yeah. with my pockets hanging out. <laughs> Okie dokie. Well, thank you for that. So, I asked you to be on today because I have been talking about it. We've been talking about it for a long time. But I had watched these TED Talks. I kind of went on a TED Talk watching spree. And since it was Women in History Month and International Women's Day, I was kind of focusing on topics that had to do with women and gender equality and, you know, humanity and whatnot. And so I had watched this one TED Talk by Deepa Narayan, and she's a social scientist and an author and all that. And her TED talk was kind of specific. It was it was more specific as far as gender is concerned. She was focused more on men and women. And what she was saying was that there were seven habits that delete women. So I asked you to take a gander at that TED talk. Do you recall? Yes, I do recall. Okay. And so what I thought we would do is discuss those seven habits. And then we'll go a little bit further. Well, some of the seven habits. But and the only reason why I want to do that first when we're talking about men and women, because I do believe that the issue we have with gender equality is not just, you know, when you're talking about gender, it's not based just on men and women. It's, you know, human rights issue. So pretty in, any human, uh, regardless of gender. And so we talked about feminism and things like that. And you, you know, said that you're a self-proclaimed feminist in the sense that your desire is equality and justice for all equally. So anyhow, so those seven habits. So she lifted them off and she went through those seven habits. And one of the first habits was that we tell women or little girls that they do not have a body. You remember her talking about that? Yeah. Yeah. And in the sense that 
it's not obviously they don't have a body, but it's to be hidden. It's not to be discussed. It's not to be shared. It's not to be understood. It's just supposed to be covered up and not discussed. Okay, so would you agree then that, I mean, you, have you recognized that in society, especially growing up, would you recognize that as something that is an issue, has been told to young girls and women as well? Yeah, you can look through history and see the rights to the body of the woman is exchanged between father and husband. Mm -hmm. It doesn't really ever, in some cultures, mm -hmm. you know. So yeah, I think we have a lot of examples of that. And then, you know, you're saying that you came from a Judeo-Christian, loosely imitated upbringing. So, so then there's a connection, you know, if you're looking back into these ancient cultures where women were more of a object. Yeah, well, I was going to say commodity. Okay. You know. Yeah, something. Um, yeah, okay. Treated yeah. that way as property or as, right. as chattel, yeah, property as a slave. Probably better. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The within that same thing, I think that girls and women are also told, you know, to be quiet, to silence, and that a good woman is silent and quiet and you know not argumentative. And the one thing that Deepa had said is that slices women off because they don't feel as though they have a voice to discuss anything or to communicate anything, but they are there without a body now, and in addition to that, without a voice. So if the body doesn't belong to the woman, then what voice would she have in the operation of it or in the, the usage of it, mm -hmm. the, the purpose of it, the, the path of Design. it? Right. Yeah, the design of it. That's right. right. I mean, you know, in truth. Yeah. Another thing she's talked about was pleasing others. I know that this is something that, I mean, I do this still. The idea of smiling all the time and being kind and trying not to be ever, you know, angry and, you know, those kind of things that these are things that are character traits of a, of a good girl or a good woman. You know, these are things I think sometimes maybe boys are told when they're younger as well that, you know, never be angry and don't ever say no, even when you're being exploited, even if you don't want to. Talking to others and their happiness is more important. So make sure that you're quiet and you're silent when it's necessary, because otherwise, you know, again, you need to be quiet, you need to be happy for everybody else. Also, you don't have a body. I think you see a, a change of that now. But I mean, think when you think back of the whole idea that children especially are to be seen and not heard, that a child saying no is is always or was always viewed as negative and that that was not OK. They weren't even allowed to say no. And so she was discussing in addition to that how something like that, again, is robbing a young girl or a young woman of yet again of her voice and of her body and of even the ability to find you know, her path. In addition to that, she discussed the idea that a woman or a girl doesn't have any sexuality. And if so, she was saying that if she is unable to know her body because she's told she doesn't have a body, how can she then know her anything about her sexuality, about her body, about her desires? Because also she's been told to be quiet and to be silenced and to please others and all of this. So there's never really this opportunity to even find anything else out about herself or her desires because her sole purpose now is she's this property. Yeah. Property. She's, property. she's so she's, she's a, a resource, but she's being used by a corrupt head or a corrupt uh, system, mm -hmm. a corrupt scheme. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a, it's a corrupt plan. So this is why her body doesn't belong to her in this mindset of some of these cultures, the body doesn't belong to her. So what voice would she have in the purposing of it? Mm -hmm. And then when you look at making sure that she's behaved, this is because we're using her for a certain reason. So she needs to be real. Controlled in a sense by. Uh, delightful. She needs mm -hmm. to be a delight <laughs> because then I can put her in whatever business agreement or environment setting mm -hmm. for my business, and she's not going to adversely affect me there. She'll be a delight there. 
she's uh yeah she's something pretty that i sprinkle around yeah you see so that's why she needs to behave because i'm making deals here and i am possessing her i'm not i don't own her and that's why freedom should be known by these children when they're five years old mm -hmm. that I, I don't own my child but i'm acting as though i do because our culture is sick in that it it encourages it encourages behavior the whole society is built on the gains of this behavior that if you can corruptly control other resources then you can you can cause harm is what what you're doing ultimately but you're causing injustice and injustice is good for some people mm -hmm. because if you can if you can gain from injustice the more unjust something is the more you're gained the the other thing I had forgotten to mention that she talked about at the beginning when she said about be quiet was the term adjust. And that was really interesting to me because I think that we say that a lot to people. I've said maybe not that specific word adjust, but whether it be myself or my daughters, because I don't see a way out of the situation necessarily because I haven't necessarily found how I can get out of the situation because I've always been instructed that, oh, getting out of the situation means not being quiet. It means not being polite and kind. And, you know, what did you say? Sprinkling, being sprinkled around as this pretty thing anymore, because in order for me to go against that flow of adjustment that women and girls are told to make on a regular basis in order to satisfy what's going on, whether it be in school or in work or in family or whatever, social situations, they don't necessarily know how to get out of them because they've been brainwashed. Is that the right word? I can't only think is, of it. This is yeah. what would keep someone in slavery. Why, why else would someone be in slavery unless they, you know, didn't know that they were in slavery, didn't know of freedom, you know? You know, when I listened to her talk about these seven habits, they were so simplistic and they were almost like things where you're like, duh. But then again, there are things that I know I have been subject to, or I know that I have done to my own kids, you know? Oh, don't do that. Don't be okay. Before we would go out when they were little, you know, now did you, you know, make sure they're clean and they're neat and no arguing and keep your hands to yourself. When we go in this house, you don't ask any questions. You don't touch anything. You don't do this. You don't, you know, there was all these rules and regulations to put on this, I guess, uh, persona of having this perfect little thing so you know my, my kids could be viewed well, i don't you, think it was intentional but when i look back and see that you know those things i did those things or those things may have been done to me or other, you know friends and things like that but you see it a lot more specifically and a lot more aggressively you know when you're talking about girls and and women a woman walks into a workplace and speaks her mind what is she? Well, how does she get in the workplace? <laughs> is what I'm saying. So this is the thing, is that if we're going to look at this thing, then we need to see it for what it is. It's either equality or it's injustice. There's mm -hmm. only two options. It's not like, a, you know, well, we get, a, we get a B in justice. You can't get a B in justice. You can't get a C in justice or in freedom. These mm -hmm. aren't things that are like this where they can be doled out. But that, but that's what I'm saying is the idea though is, is that so that's, that's what, what a just is, is it's, it's yeah. okay. Here's a little bit of yeah, justice, but you know, don't make any noise because it's going to, you know, you know, bother somebody else, but no, it, exactly. And, and so I'm agreeing with you is my point is that, yeah, it, it's, but it's things I don't think we necessarily think of all the time. So this, you know, listen, to this Ted talk made me really consider you know, whether it be myself or what I say to my daughters or in the future to my grandsons and, you know, going forward is that me doing these things and pressing these things upon them has restricted them, is, is an injustice to them, is a removal of their freedom. And then when you perpetuate this and then you continue on in life like this, you don't even realize anymore. It's like some crazy, I don't know, trick. I don't know if it's gaslighting. I don't know what it's, but you've convince them that that this is freedom when it truly is not this this is freedom that you you know live by this design that we're that 
you know, I've ag- agreed upon. It's mm-hmm. going to be a group of people. If these, if this family that you're talking about lives in, in a, in in society, you know, if they live on the grid, if they live with other people in Milpitas or in a town, then they're going to have to have a plan that everyone is comfortable with. Well, that's because what... if not, then they become the trouble family. Mm-hmm. Then the child becomes the trouble right. child. And so the deal is, is is that, you know, okay, so you're taking away their body. That's the first thing. You took away their voice. voice. That's the next thing. Now you want them to behave because why? Because, well, they don't have a voice with the body anyways. See, this is a, it's a stepping process. It's, Mm -hmm. it's a little bit more, a little bit more. You take the body. That's a big thing. If you, once you got the body, you know, you can, you can manipulate it. Yeah. You can yeah, but you can put a great deal of pressure on the soul. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And see, this is the thing is that they don't know that, that there's another option. So they've given up the body. There's no voice. They're not going to speak out about their own wants or a feeling. I got a feeling I'm uncomfortable here. Mm-hmm. They're not going to speak out on that because they don't have the voice. Because why? Because the body's not mine. Right. Okay. So now you've got them behaving. Now you want them to be pleasant and delightful wherever you sprinkle them Mm -hmm. because you have them behaving in this approved system. And the better you do in this system, the better you're rewarded by your community. Mm -hmm. Because why? Because all your community has decided that this is the system and this is the schematic and this is how we're going to run it. Okay, and so then you do the foulest of this thing. And yeah, women have born the brunt of this since the dawn of time you do the foulest thing and you 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 pollute them there's only one way to pollute someone is to join them with something that's that's corrupt and and see you can't i mean to do that to someone by this next one which you said that they don't have sexuality Mm -hmm. but to do that to someone in this in this place is a, a very a different way to affect someone in their life is a very delicate place. Well, sexuality. And, it, and it puts women and girls in a place where they're really alone and incredibly vulnerable. So they have and are convinced or viewed as nothing, a commodity that can be traded and exchanged or treated in any way someone may want to, and they can't say anything about it. So now they're, they're incredibly vulnerable, you know? And then the next thing what she had shared was that what then happens is women don't trust women. And I have to say that's interesting to me because you wonder, is it, is it because of these first four habits? I mean, I'm sure there's other things that come into play, but where you know, we, we don't trust another woman because we know in and of ourselves that we're not expressing ourselves. We don't have a body. We don't have sexuality. We were made to please each other. So is this woman doing the same exact thing to me that I have done my whole life to please everybody else? You know, that's, I kind of wonder about that, but that is a thing, you know, women don't trust other women. They, you know, women are catty or gossips or backbiting or jealous and it makes me wonder, does it have to do with this oppression to where, you know, you're put in a room with women that are treated the same exact way and all we've got left is our, in, almost like the fight or flight instinct it's against to survive. the other. Yeah. It's just survive. So now you're going to go put yourself into this group that's just trying to survive. And then you're going to wonder whether or not you're going to trust them. Well, I mean, you know, what we're... What we're looking at now is we're looking at the time for us to to come together and and rise up and take freedom back. You know, it's it's ours. But see, the thing is, is, is that if you're not willing to do that, man, I don't know if I trust you. If I myself am in here with you. See, that's the whole thing. So, like I said, women have borne the brunt of this since the dawn of time. As far as my understanding. 
Okay, so the next two things that she discussed, the one was duty over desire and then being totally dependent, more specifically on men for survival. And what she meant by duty over desire was the sense, the sense that as women and girls um, are raised up, they it is not uncommon for them to be told that they're all these responsibilities they have. You know, when you first of all, talk about these first five, you know, being quiet, you don't have a body, please others, make sure that everybody's happy. You know, their happiness is more important than your happiness. In addition to that, make sure you're, you know, a good mother, a good wife, cooking and clean and all of that. So all of those things become more important than any desire. And in fact, so severe to the point where she may lose all desire, not even recognize it. One thing that she said was in some of these interviews she had done, because she had done, you know, she had done this study for three years and she had interviewed, I think it was something like 600 men, women, and children. And one of the things that some men had said was that their partners, whether it be their wife or their girlfriend or whatever, were boring. And a lot of that had to do with the fact that they were so focused on these duties, but duties that were also expected of them, that there was no desire for anything else um, besides completing and, you know, finishing these duties. And so it, it, you know, that caused an issue within relationships. And then the next thing was being totally dependent primarily on men for survival. Because again, if you've removed, like you said, your voice, your body, your sexuality, your own personal happiness, your own personal desires, you don't even, I can't even imagine being able to find any independence within yourself. You've got to become dependent on somebody else. And so with these seven habits, and she kept referring to them as habits, and I thought that was great because her deal was these habits, just like any other habit, are learned. They're taught, and but just like any other habit, they can be unlearned. Well, this is, yeah, you're dabbling around where where they where they like to call us addicts, mm. you know, and you're dabbling around in that area, which. Because you're saying now that, that people make these things a priority, like an addict would, and, you know, it may cost them the relationship with their child. It may cost them, you know, it may cost them their child. Mm -hmm. But they're willing to do that because, you know, I, I don't know if it's just simply the greed or if it's, she mentioned in the beginning that it's the moral thing. Mm -hmm. and And honestly, you know, the reason why I don't know is because it has to be, it's it's different for every person. But I'm saying you're talking about a couple good hooks. The moral addiction, well, that's a good hook, man. You know, because if you're addicted to the moral addiction, you know what I mean? It's like coffee. You're cool if you drink coffee, man. The cops are in the coffee shop with me, you know? <laughs> nobody's nobody minds if you're addicted to coffee well yeah that's a hook man because it's an addiction it's something that uh becomes your priority plus they they give you points for doing it you know and this is how this this is the slavery you know the best slave masters are rewarded by the community mm. so the most successful slave masters if you you know the more wages you can take from your workers man the more money you make man and see, so, and that segues into what her kind of overall understanding was of this, was that when women and girls are put into these positions, and this is how they're raised, and young boys are seeing that this is how they're supposed to treat women and girls. And then when it becomes, like you said, that women and girls are a commodity or an object, what it then does is it creates a, you know, a, a position for men to abuse. And, you know, gender-based violence has been described as epidemic in proportions worldwide. I'm sure there's a whole lot more to it in many cultures and across the world. I just thought it was interesting because some of these did apply to myself or things I've seen here. But to understand these things a little bit more and see the the actual effect that it has and is perpetuated. And then when you realize that it would be easy to take someone like that and look upon them as a commodity or an object, 
Well, yeah, if they get out of line, you're going to beat them. Well, as soon as you dehumanize. Yeah. Well, then, that's what's happening then. is is they have been they're being deleted as a human. Yeah. And so, yes, dehumanization. And yeah, as soon as you dehumanize someone, then you can you can abuse them. With, right. With I mean, there's no restrictions. There's not humane restrictions anymore because why? Because they're not a human to you. Right. And that's why inequality is is that root that needs to come out. It's at the root of all of these problems. All of these problems mm -hmm. for every marginalized group. Well, what's interesting too, you know, getting away from this now. I mean, this specific TED talk was this is a male dominated society. And not necessarily in numbers, because it's pretty actually, it's something like 51% men and 49% women. But when you're talking about business and employment and just control of really just social situations and everything, the patriarchy reigns. Oh, sure. And so when you've got that as a situation, it is obvious then that women are unequal. Unless, <laughs> as the next topic I want to talk about, was the champions and agents of change. When we as a so society can come together recognize that this is an issue because you and I talked about that. I don't know if everybody even realizes it's an issue. I mean, like I'll hear people say things like, no, everything we're equal. Women are just, you know, cause women, if make, if women make a noise or if anybody that's not a man makes a noise, well, they're a bitch or a cunt or a nag, you know, or just making so much noise. They're so annoying because, you know, remember we're supposed to be quiet. We're supposed to adjust. Well, yeah, because, if the deal is that you're part of my business, you know what I mean, and it goes from the parents to the husbands, then yeah, you can't be acting out of line. And so we've got it all twisted up because we've got money thrown in there. Mm -hmm. And this is what's motivating this inequality. Mm -hmm. This is what's paying for it, you know. And the people won't let go of it. They won't let go of money. Because they're scared. They need to. They need to have it. I found this quote also by Deepa. And she said, The problem is when women fight alone, the entire weight of the system seeks to crush them. There's this he for she initiative. that, And that was the other TED Talk I had watched where I had found out about it. United Nations for Women began this initiative. Oh, I can't remember the exact year. I want to say it was like 2015, but it could have been a little bit before that. But the head of the UN Women's He for She Initiative is Elizabeth, and I don't want to say her name totally horribly right now, but I believe it is said Nyama Yaro. And so she is originally from Zimbabwe. And the He for She Initiatives, the idea was or is that if we as women or any gender that is not man, can come together and have the support of men, especially men who are in positions of power, but not just that, just any man. And if they can come alongside to be what she termed as champions or agents of change to support and uplift and take note that there is a huge issue with inequality and that there is an obvious, I don't know if you want to say chain of command where the top is men. And so what she discussed with regards to this he for she initiative is that it can be simple things, but when what it, it's going on across the world and big changes, but also small changes, little impact voices, she said, where, you know, and when a man sees a woman being sexually harassed. He stops it or corrects it or says something, you know, about it. Business owners are making sure there's no pay gap or for between men and women. And they're hiring women more so than they were before, where there was this great percentage of men in the workplace. They, and this obvious inequality of women being there, especially women of color, the, the, these changes and they're committing themselves. They're going actually to this website and you can actually go in there and commit to it, sign up to commit to being this voice 
for change where the men come alongside and recognize that women need to be supported so that they can gain this equality. And so when talking about equality and the need for men to come alongside and recognize that there needs to be their support on this end too, you and I have discussed that, you have referred to yourself to me as a feminist. But I think first we should probably define what that means to you, feminist. Okay, I think what draws me to the movement is there's a, they're motivated by equality. So, like I said, inequality Mm -hmm. is a sickness. So if your thrust is, is equality, if that's your, if that's your, you know, if that's your motivation, then yeah, you're, not only are you due, you're coming due, you know, your, your rest comes. If you've been oppressed, if you've been mistreated, then your rest is coming. But I'm saying that that this is the time for us all to come together and have it, mm-hmm. you know. And so that, of course, that makes me a feminist because this is what feminists want. They want equality. Well, mm-hmm. I want equality. I need equality. This is this is my whole life. So. I know that sometimes you look at something as just as a whole, whereas I look at the tiny little parts of the whole, and I want to check all the little boxes off. Remember, we were talking about that the other day. And so when you look at this as someone who's not a woman and, you know, looking back at your life, are there any things that you think specifically that you were raised or to believe or to do or to think that you know, need to be different in how we raise our children. What everybody needs to do is take a look at why it is that they're guiding their children to where they're trying to put them. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, we can talk about these other cultures and say, oh, yeah, and, you know, and, and we don't, you know, and then, then they become part of their their father's commodities and, they be, and they're moved and traded for wealth, power. You know, we can say that about, other cultures but our culture is the exact same thing Mm -hmm. you know whether or not the business deals are the same but as far as taking someone's freedom to guide them into what's going to benefit you and whether if that's you having the standing in your sphere or if you're you know if you're so sick as to actually make monetary uh gain from the slavery of your children you know whether the it comes in as paper money or or you know or a, a deal from networking at church i don't care it, if you're making money off of the slavery of your children then yeah that's that's definitely not equal you know that's not equality so it all goes back to this root and so digging that root out is really what's going to what's going to do it and and yeah, okay, so when you when you say, oh yeah, you don't want to raise a sociopath? No, you don't want to raise a sociopath. You want people to be empathetic. You want people to understand that we are all one. See, mm-hmm. but that's the thing is you can't do that if you're in your groups, you know, where you're saying, oh, no, no, the Judeo-Christian group says that we need to do that. No, it's not. It's not really how you should be living your life. You should be walking the path that's yours and is right for you. So that means that there will be steps that are right for you. And we really need to look at things like that. Then what that does is that makes us all equal, right? Because mm-hmm. we all have one part in this game. Talking about really, the whole. Yes, in one whole. We yeah. all have we all have one part in this whole. Mm-hmm. You know, because yeah, it it is uh it is this way, but corruption is when we take yeah, there's some truths that we tell our kids. But corruption is when we don't tell them the whole truth. Mm. Corruption is when we add a little bit that isn't true. That's gonna, it's gonna help us all out. I'm just doing this for all of us. I'm doing it. You know, I'll even do it for the kid. I'll, let's do it for the kid. Let's take away their freedom for them. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Because then they'll be successful. Then they'll be able to sit through medical school mm-hmm. for twelve years. If I, you know, if I really take away their freedom now. Or maybe they'll be able to marry good if they're not real sharp. You know, whatever <laughs> my plans are for the kid. Yeah. Which is no different than using the kid. You take the kid's body, 
You take the kid's voice of their body. You make them behave in your social settings so you can put them and sprinkle them wherever you want. Then you're going to make the big trade one day because that's what's been keeping them safe for this long is you need to hang on to that, to that jewel on that crown of that daughter that you're giving away, right? Mm. So then you take her sexuality. And then when you take her sexuality, then you, it's easy to, to transition into, girl, you're not going to get what you want. You're going to get what we say you need. Mm. And, and then what was her last habit? That she becomes totally dependent on yeah. men for yeah. survival. So, so yeah. So now I need what I need. What I need. I need what you say I need. So give it to me because I need it. No one else can give it to me. Elizabeth Ayama Yaro, she had quoted Einstein. She said that Einstein had said, "A human being is part of the whole, but he experiences himself, his thoughts and feelings, as something separate from the rest." This delusion is a kind of prison for us. Our task must, to be, must be to be free ourselves from this prison by widening our circle of compassion. You know, and that was kind of what you're talking about. Also the idea of looking upon one another as instead of separate, as being part of a whole. And if we're looking upon one another as part of a whole, which means then that your survival... And experience and elevation can only bring survival and experience and elevation to myself because we're a whole, we're going to be moving in unison and one together. Then it would only make sense then that we would, we'd be equal. <laughs> oh yeah. It you has know? to be a whole for you to find equality Yeah, because it has to be a whole for me to be a part and you a part. Now we're equal. Yeah. You know? And then, but you know, we try to, to divide up. And so we lose the equality and then we just, that corruption has turned us to slavery, which is, man, you know, it's just not, it's not healthy. It's not healthy for any of us because then the body is not functioning the way it's supposed to. And so that means that there's the whole and we're sick. Mm. And so that means that I'm sick. I'm sick because this is me. Well, thank you. How was it? It was like the surgery come out and everything seemed fine <laughs> I, I still got my wallet what is it what is this the testicles uh, spectacles testicles wallet and watch you got it yes every good catholic should know that all right thank you i love you oh i breathe for you yeah. i love you too much <laughs> Thank you for joining us today on That's Not Proper. Please remember to check out the website at that'snotproper.com. Also, share and review That's Not Proper. It really helps support the podcast. In addition to that, do not forget about Rochelle Ball at Ball Training Solutions. The website is balltrainingsolutions.com. Her email is balltrainingsolutions at gmail.com. And her phone number is 925 480 seven six six two thank you for listening today and stay tuned for the next episode of that's not proper